How's it going there guys? Welcome to my workshop. I'm Roderick. In this week's episode, I'll be showing you how I made these awesome modern chevron doors that I made to upgrade from these old doors to these ones. This was definitely a fun project to make. So let's just jump right in the video and I show you how I made these. I used three full sheets of construction grade plywood to build these sexy chevron doors that you saw. To start things off, you'll need to cut up the base structure of the doors. The size will really be determined by the door frame that you'll be working with. I use the straight edge to cut up the two door panels that we'll need with the dimensions of 180 by 88 centimeters. Then we go on and start cutting up a bunch of 9 centimeter pieces that will be making up our diamond chevron pattern. I used up the leftovers that we had from our two previous sheets. Then on my second door, I had to start up on the third sheet. In order to give your doors a 3D kind of effect, I would suggest to put a 45 degree chamfer as I did here. This will give your door more depth as you can see. This is how much I had cut off. Then I go ahead and cut 45 degree chamfers and all the other pieces. With that all done, we need to get our plywood panel and then we find our center point. So I wanted the boards to start from the center point to the corner of the doors. I used my new crosscut sled to cut up the first pieces to 45 degrees on one side each. Then we go back to our panel to mark up the pieces to the exact angle needed to make sure that the pieces go from the center to the corner of the panel. So I got this angle from the markings that I did. Then I set up my mitre gauge on my crosscut sled to this new angle. I use this angle for the rest of the center diamond pieces. So I recently ran out of wood glue in my shop. So I went down to my local hardware. They also didn't have the normal five liter wood glue that I usually buy. I saw this uh, cornice adhesive and in the application instructions, they mentioned that it can help the cornice stick to wood. And then in my head, I was like, it means I can make wood stick to wood. And then I bought it since it wasn't that expensive. In my opinion, it's a far inferior product compared to normal wood glue. So please don't make the same mistake I did. Do not use this thing. Once I had started using it and then I decided, what the hell, let me just go ahead, I'll see what will happen, come what may. I use some wood screws to hold the panels together while the contact adhesive does its magic. Once I had all my pieces on the one side installed, I came with the circular saw and flush cut everything to the panel door. Then I started on the outer part of the diamond, making sure to align my 8mm dowel that I've been using throughout for a spacer align it to the corner of the door. You'll see it a bit closer when I come this side to the bottom of the door. The 8mm dowel will also be used between the diamond part of the door as well as the outer parts. Then we come back with the circular saw to flush trim the panel door. Here's the closer look that I was talking about. I put the 8mm dowel straight to the corner of the door. With these side pieces, we don't need to cut any angles. We just keep it at 90 degrees. Then we leave it to overlap on the sides. We come back with a circular saw, flush trim that. Then we just fill up the rest of the gaps. We're basically done with this panel. I repeated the same process with the next panel as well. I had to take a couple of minutes to just admire the work I've done, post a few pictures on social media. Then I get back to working on them again. I filled up all the gaps and holes with sawdust and glue mix, sanded from 80 grit all the way up to 220 grit, then I sanded the sides flush as well. How do you like the door orientation that I have there in the back? I think it looks pretty neat. Now that the patterns are all done, I have to add some trim to make the door more stable and strong. I started ripping up some pine boards to the width of the door. Then my day just turned sour after this knot. Thank <laughs> you. 
but the show must go on. Could you please do me a favor and smash that like button for me? This will help me know that you appreciate my efforts and enjoying the video as well as to let YouTube know to recommend my video more so my channel can grow. That's the whole point we're making YouTube videos. So my goal with this video is to make 100 likes. Thank you very much. I make these videos specifically for you. I'm glad you're enjoying them. Let's continue with the video. So. The door panels that I had made had stayed a couple of weeks, aka months, before I managed to get time to come back and finish them. So they had started to have a bow in them. So I needed to put some force, as you can see with this 20 liter bucket and the clamp on the other side. I was trying to straighten it out before I go ahead and add the trim. So the trim will also stabilize it and keep it more straight. So I added trim on the one side, then I did it on the other side as well. I'll put glue, screw it, and also some dowels as well. I use these quick clamps to keep the trim flush with the top side of the door, which is the business side of the door. My trim was not cut to the exact width since my table saw just died. So later on, I'll need to come back and hit it with the flush trim bit on my router. I filled the small gaps that were left after gluing on the trim edges, then followed up with the 100 grit sandpaper on my bell sander, sanded everything flush. Following that, I went on using my hand sander, deburring all the edges so I wouldn't injure myself when handling these doors. Then I flipped it around, I used my flush trim bit on my router to flush the um, trim to the door panels. This was quite a messy process, so I had to sort it out. Then I come back again with the hand sander just to deeper the edges. Then we go on. I had to clamp the doors together just to make sure that they stay straight throughout the night. This is a very tiring day. I was exhausted. The next day came by. It was time to take off these old doors and go on and start making the frame for these new doors that I have. I built this workshop shed of mine in May 2021. This was my first construction I've ever done at this large scale. I had only been woodworking for less than two years at the time. So my walls are not straight as you can see here. On top of the walls not being straight, the top part of the frame is 5 centimeters wider than the bottom part of it. So yeah, mistakes were made during this building of this shed. So this time around, I made the door frame to be as square as I could. On this side, I needed to add a huge chunk of wood in order to compensate for that five centimeter gap that you can see. And you can see how big that gap is. So in order to reinforce the strength of the new frame, I had to add several dowels with glue and then it became like one piece of wood. Then later on, it will use some fillers to close it up. The top had no issues. So we just uh, glued and screwed and it was done. This is the part I've been excited about, hanging the door. So when it comes to that, I thought everything would just fit smoothly, but it didn't. I don't know what happened. It's, I guess it wasn't square as possible. So I had to do some, some trimming here and there until it fit properly. And then I went on, I put the hinge on the top and the bottom of seven inches down each side. I screwed it in. Then I had to ask my lovely wife to come and help me support the door while I mounted it on did the same thing on the other side as well. The doors have a one centimeter gap between them. This is by choice. I had planned to add this piece of wood for added support to increase the security of the doors. Following this, I installed door latches on the top and the bottom of the new doors. I added two deadbolt locks to the doors to beef up the security. How we install this is pretty interesting. It was my first time doing it. So we find the center on the door. We use a drill bit that's wide enough as the lock itself. We remove all the contents using the drill bit or you can also use uh, chisels as well. I don't have any chisels. Then we make the slots for the keys before installing the lock. We insert the lock. Then I made pencil markings on the bolt part of the lock. I closed the doors Then I turned the key slightly. This left some markings on the other side of the door. I used a drill to start hogging out the material. Then we are pretty much done with the locks. I added a latch off camera though with one of those alarm padlocks. 
I use this foam filler thingy to fill up those holes that I said I'll fill up earlier on. Now it's time for me to finish up my paint job that I started five months ago while I was making this cabinet of mine. Since you're still here, it means you enjoyed the video. Could you please just hit that subscribe button for me? Hopefully, I'll get to a thousand subscribers very soon. Then I can get that YouTube money and then I can start affording better tools like the other YouTubers out there. Thank you for subscribing. You've been a star. Then I hit everything with some water paint. This is a grayish kind of water paint. Since this one will be on the outside, after the water paint, I came back with clear varnish just to seal the wood and to keep it weather protected. How's it going there guys? My name is Roderick. Welcome to Show Woodworking DIY. Check out this cabinet build that I made. I know you like it. 